and hello good people of the internet, it is I, Tommy Kelly, and this is Adventures in Woo Woo. And this is the second time I've tried to attempt to record this video. The first time was this morning when I went to the forest and I uh, sat in the car because it was very rainy and very blustery and windy. And not only did I not want to really get wet and <laughs> expose myself to the elements, I also thought that the, despite having a kind of a wind protection on my microphone, that uh, the wind might affect it too much. And instead what happened is when I did it in the car, the sound was all muffled and terrible anyway. So, you know, that's what you get for, <laughs> for planning things. Besides, uh, I'm using the DJI uh, Pocket 2 and I had the follow feature where you can follow your face. And it just, it's terrible. It, it was much better on the first one. Anyway, no one cares. We're in the office. What I want to talk about today is a question that someone left on YouTube last week or in the last couple of days. And it is what is the differences or what is the similarities or the comparison between chaos magic and the law of attraction. And I have talked about this in different places. Pretty sure we talked about it in Tasta and I have talked about it in other vlogs. But uh, I thought it would be worthwhile to do a video on its own and talk a bit about my thoughts around it. Um, one of the things that is probably one of the main tenets or one of the mostly agreed upon ideas in chaos magic, and of course no one agrees on anything in chaos magic, but one, one of the things that is somewhat agreed on is that it is the belief of the operator or the magician or the wizard or whatever you, word you like to, uh, to use um, that is the agency of magic. What I mean by that is that it's the belief that makes it work. In some other forms of magic, and more in, I suppose in more traditional forms of magic, and I guess in the kind of movie magic thing as well, but in the traditional kind of classical sense, it was more that the person was in themselves magic, but it was the items were magic, the materia. So you have things like, you know, bat's blood, newt's eye, feather from a rare bird. Some of those are code for other things. Some of the more horrible things like a, that you come across are actually code for other things. Some of them aren't. Some of them are as horrifying as you think. But um, it used to be, I was seeing that it was the actual, you know, it was the book that gave you power, the grimoire itself or it was the rock, the crystal, or something like that. You know, it was the actual materia, and you as a wizard, or a witch, or a cunning person, were able to know what was magical and be able to use it, but it was the, act the magic was external to you, you yourself, to a large extent. Again, none of this is fully agreed upon, but that's how it kind of was. But in chaos magic, we have this idea that it's belief is it, as a tool, or belief is the agency of magic, and it's your belief that makes the magic work and all of these kind of materia or external things like crystals or robes or wands, chalices or bat's eye or chicken feet or whatever it is, um, only you know, are used to um, add weight or add support or back up or make the magician uh, feel more magic. It's, it's to kind of uh, um, accentuate his belief, to add to his belief, to bolster his belief or boost or his belief, but that it's, they're not in themselves magic. It just makes, puts you in the zone, makes you feel more magical. It amplifies in a sense your belief about yourself, but it's still you, the operator, who's doing the magic. So it's one of its fundamental kind of things, chaos magic is this idea that it's the belief that's important, not the stuff, not the ritual, not the dance, not the, the action itself, but it's how that action or that thing instills the belief in the operator and then it's the belief that causes the manifestation or the change or whatever it is that the wizard wants to have seen in the world. Now that sounds very familiar, doesn't it? In the sense if you come from a more new age kind of a background where you have the law of attraction or the secret or new thought or I suppose in a sense some sort of form of Christian science too where it's mind over matter, where it's your belief that is the thing that gets you what you want to manifest. If you want a new car, you think about a new car, you think about a new car, you visualize the car coming into your driveway, you visualize yourself driving it, the smell of it, the sound of it, and then the car materializes in your life. And But it's the belief that you had that has brought it in. And in a sense, uh, anything when you don't have the things you want, it's because you don't have the right consciousness or you don't have the right beliefs, that you're not putting out the right vibes, that you're not doing, having the right thoughts, that you're in poverty consciousness rather than wealth consciousness. 
And these two things seem very similar in that, uh, you know, the, the, you could describe uh, chaos magic as what you believe, you know, you attract to yourself in a sense, and the law of attraction is what you believe is what you attract yourself. So how are these any different? Well, I think one of the main differences is that's kind of it with the law of attraction. It doesn't really go any further. And I know some books have come out since, like The Secret, which popularised it recently. Um, I suppose I first came across the Law of Attraction with Stuart Wilde, and uh, he wrote about it in the 80s. And there's like previous to that, there's, it's always been read. It's no secret, <laughs> as we know. But, um, you know, so it's just, that's it. It doesn't really go any further. Um, it kind of, you think about something and the world is, I suppose, it's a response to your in a world, you know, what you believe about yourself, what you believe about your worth, your self-worth, is what's attracted to you. Like becomes like. If you feel positive, the world around you is positive. And there's no more to it, you know. And of course, when it gets to that, well, there, there's some very quick negative things that happen with the law of attraction in that if you have a shitty life or something bad has happened to you, then it's your fault. Because there, there's nothing external, there's no kind of judged or no anything doing it to you other than the universe is just responding to your vibes so if you get sick you have the wrong type of vibes you, you're vibrating wrong you're thinking the wrong things you're thinking like a sick consciousness or um whatever almost that you want to be sick that it's your fault you're sick or if you are poor you're going through a hard time you're you're in poverty consciousness and you're kind of you can't you no, know, the blame lies at your door. Certainly not anything external, because all you have to do is change your thoughts, and you know, and you can just attract whoever or whatever you need to you. And we get very quick into victim blaming and spiritual bypassing in this kind of thought, where you have, you know, I'd say if someone is sick, then it's their fault. But if there's something terrible happening on the other side of the world, there's a huge earthquake. In some way, this kind of belief system would would not even I was going to say suggest but would demand that that was part of their consciousness that that's what they on some level wanted to happen that these great tragedies that if they were if they had a better kind of outlook in life or were more I don't know less tragedy consciousness or had less guilt or whatever it is that they're, they're blaming and um, then these things wouldn't have happened to them they wouldn't have been there you know that they're, they're or you know that certain countries say were like really poor people or war or whatever that it's rather than that being a terrible thing and something we should all work on and maybe improve and that it's no that on some level they are in that consciousness and they've attracted that to themselves and it's their fault or even worse they want it on some level they've made some sort of soul contract for that to happen it's terribly insidious terribly awful and a really nasty way to look at the world and I think one of the reasons why people kind of are attracted to that is because they want a reason why bad things happen to other people and not to themselves. In that as soon as you hear something bad happen to someone, your kind of initial reaction is try to work out what they did wrong. And why we do that, I feel, is that it's because we want to make sure we don't do that. So that bad, random event won't happen to us because it was clearly something that they did that was their fault. You know, and... You know, random things do happen. We do live in a world that's kind of has a very random, chaotic element to it. And not everyone gets sick is their fault. Not everyone has a hard time, uh, has had their own consciousness. And not everyone, um, you know, has the privilege to live in a, in a country or a town or whatever it is that uh, isn't war-torn or, you know, has bad crops or it just is, you know, generally poor or something. And that to feel that you were, because you were born into that is somehow your choice seems very callous and cruel on, on many levels. So that's kind of where the law of attraction f falls apart for me in that while there is the similarities between the agency of magic being belief, that there seems a trap in it. It seems very shallow, it feels almost cruel, it's, it's very materialistic, it's very self-centered, it's very contracted, it's very grounded in wanting the things, which is not, I, you know, we can want the things. Clearly we should want the things because having things often are more nicer than not having things and the struggle to, you know, to, to get your basic needs met or to, you know, to be satisfied and all that. I think it's, it's, it's not to kind of negate that and say that's not important, but when it's your sole kind of focus to the extent that you're, you know, creating, painting a picture of the world where um, good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people or to those who chose, choose it. And I think it's way more complicated than that. And I think that's, 
it's kind of it's it's you can see that as kind of very prevalent in modern society you know just kind of out for yourself and kind of in a sense fuck everyone else you know they can deal with it and that's that's kind of I think why the law of attraction became quite popular again because it has that kind of sentiment running through it you know that I, I can have what I want and I deserve it because of who I am and if you don't have it you don't deserve it um, so then in Chaos Magic, you kind of, while you have that, it's almost as if that's a kind of a starting point. And it's just one facet of what Chaos Magic is about. It's kind of going, well, let's kind of look at beliefs and what our beliefs are and how that's affecting our world. And let's try and change our beliefs and see how that affects the world. Let's do something and 100% believe that it will work, conceive it works, even if it doesn't seem from the standpoint of where I am now, that um, it's, it could, could possibly be true, that you could possibly believe in this. And with the kind of statement that, or the motto of Chaos Magic, which is nothing is true, everything is permitted. So that if you let go of all your beliefs, you can believe whatever you want. And you can, uh, you know, that then, the idea being that then that when you change your beliefs, you can get what you want by being more malleable and more flexible. But of course, there's a postmodernist to that where, you know, nothing is true. And I think, again, you can fall into a trap with that in that, um, you know, fake news. You have, you know, um, the new true or, you know, the alternative truth or something like that, where, you know, there's this kind of sense of where people can go, I'm allowed to, be, you know, my false <laughs> conclusions about the world should be treated as on the same level or with the same kind of um, seriousness and uh, as, 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 you know, like a scientific fact or something that is more kind of felt as if it's, you know, more real or has been kind of proven over the years or something that is more provable on a, on a, on a wider scale than just a personal gut feeling. And we could kind of, when you kind of put everyone's beliefs on one kind of tier where they all are meant to be considered uh, equal, then you kind of have the world where we're in now, you know, where it's a, it's a bit people kind of demand that their kind of view of the world, their personal gnosis, their unverified personal gnosis of the world be treated with the same respect as, you know, everything else. I'm, I'm just kind of grasping for the words that, that, that my personal gnosis be treated in the same way that a fact is. But I mean, you can get lost in kind of semantics around these type of things. But I hope I'm getting across from trying to say that not all beliefs are equal, clearly. And not all views and opinions are equal, clearly. Some haven't kind of, um, you know, they haven't been tested over time and have fallen apart. And some have stood the test of time and haven't. And, you know, the, the scientific method rather than scientism is, you know, that whole idea of, okay, is it repeatable? Is it, you know, other people can do it? Let's look at it. Let's, you know, keep it going. Let's find the one thing in it that, you know, that is kind of, a, in a sense, Objective, that's the idea, um, rather than a subjective kind of feeling about it. But of course, again, you're going to fall into a different thing of can, is it possible for humans to ever look at anything objectively being a subject? So there is that kind of, in chaos magic, there's a problem too with this belief. But why I think I kind of am attracted to chaos magic a bit more, even though I have found that the love of attraction has worked for me at different times, and vision boards and stuff like that have worked for me, um, almost as well, if not more than, say, sigils, like from the chaos magic point of view. But um, Chaos Magic seems like a great kind of starting point and is more an ethos or a kind of guide, um, which rather than belief is the agency of magic, is this kind of idea of if it works, or, you know, that it's okay, that the, the, the acting is if. So the, rather, than, rather than saying it's true, you act as if it's true. You do the actions that, it would, what would you do if this was true? If you were a successful person, how would you act? How would you treat other people? What would you do with your money? Um, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a bit more than just blindly believing in something or pretending, you know, it's kind of acting on an assumption. What would it be like if I was confident? How would a confident person act and act as if? And then you kind of have more of a, an action plan than just sitting on your couch, couch waiting for your car to come, um, which I think is, is, is it, it, it's, it's a better deal, you know what I mean? It, it, it's something that it feels like it's, it's, it's more real. Um, but even apart from the kind of the belief shifting or the, the, the belief part of it, a good 
good big part of another thing that we kind of do agree on in Chaos Magic, or at least some people do, you know what I mean? We'll argue all day about all of these things, is that it's results-based. So it's kind of, the idea of Chaos Magic was to throw away all the dogma, throw away all the robes, throw away all the ceremonial stuff, all the kind of unneeded elements to all of these things. What was the core, um, concise bit of magic of these things that we've been doing for millennia, what is the bit that actually works? And get it down to that bit, throw away all the fodder, get through all of that, and just get to the gold. And that has kind of led to people to kind of believe that means I can do whatever I want. And to a certain sense, it does mean you can do whatever you want, but the whole idea was that you throw away all the unneeded stuff and you get to the bit that works. And that doesn't mean that you get to do whatever you want. What it means you get to do and you get to find out the thing that works and then you do more of that. And kind of, I feel, and Chaos Magic has come to a kind of a point where a lot of people are wholesalely throwing out all of the tradition, all of the different things, and just kind of doing what they want. And that's perfectly fine, but are you getting the results? Because that's what you're aiming for, it's results-based magic. Is it getting you what you want? Is doing things your own way getting you what you want? If it is, great. If it's not, have a rethink. And um, there's another problem with that kind of idea of doing whatever you want, is that there's a bit in when you're learning say a subject or you're learning something so you go to college and you know when I went to college I did aromatherapy uh, one of the things I did I did holistic health studies overall and uh, it was a case of you had to do anatomy and physiology and I personally would never have done anatomy and physiology you know I just I was interested say in the essential oils in kind of the, the aspects around them maybe learning a bit about the actual chemical cons cons con uh, parts <laughs> of, um, of what were in them and you know a bit of history of how, how it came about or how the actual oils were made Grant I could understand that but then it was like no, you have to learn what all the, every muscle in the, in the body is you have to learn what every bone in the body is you have to learn all the different systems and functions and all of that and that's something had I just had an interest in aromatherapy I would never have learned and I would never have pushed myself to do and it's the part of it that when I did all that and I learned all that, how it gave me a much more holistic uh, view of the thing and how aromatherapy or massage itself works within the body and what it's trying to do and you know its, its limits and its capabilities and you know it becomes a bit less woo, still a bit of woo in it obviously, but um, you know you have a greater understanding that I would never have had if I just had followed my bliss and just learned about the oils I wanted to learn about where I you know just stayed within the comfort zones that didn't really challenge me if you know it's just like doing the thing I want I just want to learn about oils you know but when it was challenged when I was saying no you also have to learn all of these things it became a greater thing and I feel that this kind of initial thing of throwing out tradition or tr you know rather than even trying to do the lesser banishing of the ritual less or banishing ritual of the pentagram once you mean to go I don't like angels I'm not doing any of these things I'm gonna make up my own that I would suggest that maybe doing it for a while so you know what it's meant to be first but also you're challenging yourself to do the things that you wouldn't normally do and get out of your comfort zones and to do all of this kind of rather than just you know doing the nice bits the easy bits the bits that you can you know, you're interested in, do all the harder bits too to get a more rounded kind of view of things. And so kind of what I'm saying about that in Chaos Magic is that while it's a good starting point, it also, again, has its faults too where it can very easily fall into just uh, doing whatever you want. And then, you know, going, well, why isn't it working? I'm doing, you know, exactly what I, I've been told. And which is also the same thing that happens, is kind of the fault in the law of attraction where if you don't get what you want, then it's your fault. And I think the real kind of spirit of case magic is it's not that if you don't get what you want that it's in a, if you're doing it right if you're you know doing your notes taking your you know doing your due diligence on learning everything and you know trying to work out what it is finding the actual gold within these things that what you find is that the method is the thing that's wrong or rather than you start blaming yourself whereas in love traction that the only kind of thing you can have if it doesn't work is you can only blame yourself because you didn't have the right thoughts all of that kind of stuff. But in case Mike, there's a, a continuous kind of look at improving the method, finding new ideas, new approaches, new kind of, um, you know, it's expansive. It's almost like a starting off point into all of these other places, if it's done right. You know, rather than just kind of sitting with the one thing 
and trying to do it over and over again, going, why isn't this? Why isn't this sigil working? Why haven't I won the lottery? I've done 50 sigils. Why is this? You know, why is this not happening for me? Um, but again, there's a, a negative to that too, in that you could be constantly just jumping from tradition to tradition, from system to system, and never really mastering anything, or never really getting fully embedded in yourself in the whole thing. It's like, well, I did a sigil once and it didn't happen. It didn't work out for me, so sigils are useless, they don't work. Or I worked with mantras, you know, for a week and it didn't work. I meditated once or twice and it didn't work. I did, you know, I couldn't shut my mind off or whatever it is you're looking for. And you keep jumping. You see that a lot in the New Age as well, where you have like people, you know, doing sh a shamanism course and their life doesn't get better or their life doesn't improve or whatever it is. And then they go and do Reiki and their life doesn't improve and they're jumping from kind of system to system. Of course, that happens in magic too. You know, to hang out with some Goetia people goetic demons and you know don't get what they want and then they do some sigils and then you know whatever rather than trying to and i'm not saying you have to spend your entire life kind of to master one particular thing you can if you want of course but it's more do the work in it involved you know do the thing rather than just kind of dipping your toe in and saying ah oh, this is rubbish do the actual learn the anatomy and physiology bit of the aromatherapy as well you know learn the not just how to make a sigil, why that possibly would work, you know, or really get involved yourself in it. Look at the different kind of ways you can activate them. Look at the different kind of ways that you can shoal them or, you know, robofish them or all of these kind of things that have come around sigils. That's just as an example. But ultimately, I suppose, the difference, what's the difference between chaos magic and law of attraction? And if both are based on the agency of magic is belief, um, I think the difference is that chaos magic is an expansive and it allows you to go in different areas where I think law of attraction is quite contracted and very one-sided and one thing and kind of can only lead, unless you're very lucky and you get everything you want, can only lead to a kind of darkness. And it kind of puts too much pressure on you to, to be you know, forced positive, have a forced positivity, to victim blame yourself and to... Um, you don't have to be too hard on yourself, and you're setting yourself up for failure, and you're, you're only having really one kind of, you know, bow in your quiver, which is this kind of positive thinking or attracting, whatever it is, you know. Um, whereas case magic seems more expansive in a way to get into all of these other things if done right, rather than just skipping through them. Um, both of both of them clearly have their uh, downfalls or their, their problems and their issues, and uh, you know, you endlessly the talk to six chaos magicians and they'll have six different views of what chaos magic is but from my point of view it's that it's the agency of magic is belief and that it's results based that's how i think chaos magic is now i'm not saying i totally agree with that i'm not saying that i think that um the agency of magic is belief i'm just saying that's what i think chaos magic is just to be quite clear on that and and that that's what the kind of ethos behind it is getting rid of all the crud all of the unneeded things and finding the bit that works not doing things the way you want them to be. It might, the bit that work might be the bit that you don't want to do. It might be invoking the angels. That might be the bit of the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram that actually works. And you won't know that until you do it. Um, the one thing as well I want to say about just the belief stuff as well is that there's too much involved in your psyche and your programming and your what you were brought up with. The roles and pendulums that surround it just, you, you know, the vortexes that you're in, um, to even really fully change a belief. You know, you don't even know half the time what you actually believe. Do you ever catch yourself sometime and you go, that's, I don't even believe that, that's what my mother believes, or that's what my father believes, or that's what whoever, a friend from a childhood believes, and you kind of just carried it around as if it was your belief. The more kind of work you do, like say therapy or shadow work or any of these uncovering things, the more you realise... <sighs> <laughs> you know that you have so much to get through and you can you know in chaos magic you have that kind of extra thing that you don't have in the law of attraction which is the acting as if so it's kind of understanding that you can't fully belief shift even though some people say that the whole point of belief shifting is to fully commit and i do believe that you should fully commit if you are doing the belief shifting thing but can you fully commit is it 100 percent able to change a belief if you feel you are fundamentally a shitty person I don't think no matter how much of belief shifting you can do or how much positive thinking or whatever, it's going to actually shift that. I think you need to actually work through that to get it. Um, and that's not really kind of allowed in the law of attraction. But I think the law of attraction and chaos magic are more similar than people want to uh, admit. 
I think there's an awful lot of crossover. And uh, I think both work, but I think kind of not work 100% of the time, and I don't think always work. And I, I think they seem to have benefits as well as problems. But uh, yeah, so it's going to have to come down to what you think. So I'll, I'll throw it back to you. Do you even think that belief is the agency of magic if you're a chaos magician? Is that something you agree with? Is that a, a, kind of the tenant of chaos magic that you, that you believe? How do you feel about the acting as if? Is it possible to fully 100% change a belief within yourself as an exercise, as something to do, as a, a kind of a, a magic spell, uh, without doing the work around us, the shadow work, the counselling, the therapy, whatever the, the, the word is? Um, do you think the law of attraction does lead to the victim blaming, spiritual bypassing that, you know, if something goes wrong or you don't have the life that you want, it's your problem? Do you actually think it's your problem? Maybe that is something you feel that the world, you can have anything you want in the world if you work hard enough and do the right things, which seems to be a story an awful lot of us tell each other. Um, and do you feel the part of chaos magic that has the um, notion around doing, you know, getting to the, throwing away the, the bits that are unneeded leads to doing what you want? Or do you think doing what you want is, you know, following your heart, following your bliss, is the actual thing, whether or not you get the results or not, that it's what's your thoughts around all of those things. So I'll throw it over to you and leave all of that with you. Hopefully that had made some sense and um, some coherence. And I hope I answered the question of the person who asked me on YouTube, what's my thoughts around chaos magic versus the law of attraction? So good people of the internet, um, may you be well and may, may our best days be ahead. See ya.